What is up? Welcome back to Softcore History. I am your host for the week, Rob Fox. I am joined, as always, by Dan Register and Jake Goldman. How are you doing today, guys? Fucking joyous day. Joyous day. It's a great day. Great day. Great day for Dan. Actually, mm-hmm. well, Dan, tell the people. They don't need to know. Okay, fine. They don't need to know my financial business. Dan's just Especially your illegal financial business. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> none, none of the money you made, you made legally. No. Not as bad as it sounds, but it's not legal. <laughs> it's true. Not what in this is, state, at least. Yeah. What is the legality like? It's pretty gray now, isn't it? How you made your money? Like, isn't it? Well, for you specifically, it's not gray. It's very black. It's, but It's very black. It's very dark. It's dark. But, like, the U.S. doesn't need this. Oh, no. It's a terrible uh, vice to get into. Yeah. Not when you win, though, baby. That's right. Not That's when right. you win. Oh, now we know what it is. <laughs> Jig is up. Now we know what it is. Uh, I play well, bingo. <laughs> online bingo online no i went to a hall dude <laughs> there's one not too far from my house and i've always katie and i are like maybe we go they have some gigantic prizes rackets it's a fucking whole thing i think it used to be like a thing there's definitely some type of uh dirty money that gets kind of washed in a bingo hall I, in old people bingo halls yeah yeah I especially so. especially there's when they're mentally not all there of course just give them a different card. Oh, you didn't have bingo. Swap it out. Yeah. Uh, that and, like, the sweepstakes shit that's around here. Like, all the fake casinos that are just, like, digital slots on video screens. Where it's like, you have to give a donation. And yeah. It's like, what What are y'all doing in here? I'm also down about the conspiracy that all these California winners for the lotto, for Powerball. What about it? The re- they're rigging it so uh, the state can collect it. Half- so just that state. So they California has b- bigger state taxes than like a Texas winner. So a big bigger portion. Will so go if you to the win government. a billion in the Powerball, which is a la- like a pa- like the last two have been from California, the most popular state in the union, uh, and essentially, <laughs> yeah, right, it has nothing to do with by the like, fact there's the by most like people almost there. by like almost double. Yeah, it's, just, it's, it's not like a fifty million state. in California. Texas is second biggest with like thirty million or something like that. Yeah, but yeah, should the anyway. Yeah, but no, they get they get. Uh, a bigger portion of the taxes, so they get five hundred million dollars just into their into their bank or whatever. Mm-hmm. I'm down with that. It's not. I mean, obviously a population thing, but not. It's rigged. It's rigged. That's the game is always won. rigged. That's why I haven't won it. If I move to California right now, I bet you I win the lottery. Yeah. When I lose, it's not my problem. No. It means the, the game. The game is rigged. Fucking government, man. So they could move more. Whatever. Anyway, a uh, couple things. A little house cleaning before we go. On. First off, we have a Patreon patreon.com slash softcore history on it you get two extra episodes a week uh more episodes like this plus other fun stuff voicemails i think we're finishing up our risk risk game this week no not this week once joel's wife is gone okay so a couple weeks so joel had his wife come into town for the month and i don't want to like pull him away from his uh she could dearly beloved she could strategize with him yeah why not bring her in but I mean, it's 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 still annoying of us to take his time. Yes, he's absolutely. got a he's got a rental wife. We do not. <laughs> yeah. God, sorry. I just, I just. Yeah, she has mail order. Well, but it's like Prague. mail order rental. It's like old Netflix. Well, she you know still what I mean? lives in the Czech Republic. I know. They're still kind of battling out green card issues. I told her to just enter through the border down south. Just come. Yeah. Everybody's whatever. doing it. Mm-hmm. That's by the way the myth that if you get married, bang. Citizen the next day. No, does not Not happen. at fucking all. Not when you're white. Not even when you're white. <laughs> not even. A blonde. Uh, Blue eyes? Blue eyes, yeah. Yeah, 90 white. Day, 90 Day Fiance has been uh, on our TV a little bit more lately. Yeah. That's just kind of turned into like daytime background shit. That is the most hilarious show in Dude, reality TV. I don't understand how, you know, people get like canceled all the time for like old things they said mm-hmm. on a podcast or, or whatever, whatever. Some old movie or like um, or like sometimes people bring up like uh, obviously Robert Downey Jr. in blackface in um, Tropic Thunder or maybe <laughs> like how but that's or like the how joke. they or about how they are like say, I think people give him the pass because it's literally Twitter Written sometimes gets script. angry. I think it's they get a hold of it every now and then. Yeah, yeah. 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 But uh, or like people will sometimes shit on like Seth Rogen for like super bad saying the word like fag a thousand times. You know what I mean? But he's being a cop, so it tracks. No, he doesn't even say it. It's just in the script he wrote. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He, but like. It's funny to me that no one has ever thought 
to cancel anyone who's ever produced a show for TLC because those people are bored, human trafficking and human misery. Like, those people are taking advantage the spare dealers. of <laughs> fucked up people. It is it, TLC is just the freak show channel. <laughs> it's the, it's, aren't you, you, go, you go, those, everyone on TLC is the fucking elephant man. <laughs> but that's expected, right? It's like going to the circus You're, and complaining that, oh, there's a woman with a beard. You are, you are a piece of shit if you are pitching shows to TLC. Mm. If you have a show that got on TLC, you are a piece of shit. That being there's said. A, they have a show called Too Fat to Transition. So they're taking advantage <laughs> of someone who is what? morbidly obese and transgender. Like, multiple situations so going on with them. That. And your whole thing is to just fucking gawk. Just fucking gawk at that situation. That's insane. I There's that one. That's immoral. There's that one, and that's the Thousand Pound Sisters, where yeah. they both equal a thousand pounds. Yeah. And, like... I've never felt more uncomfortable looking at the co- not even the show, the cover of the show. What are you talking about, though? These people get hot meals, a place to live, maybe like a Visa uh, or American Express credit card for like three hundred fifty bucks for the show. <laughs> They're taking ch- care they of. They get a Chili's two gift card they can only use at the airport. Like mm-hmm. tr- yeah. truly insane that no produ- like no one's been like, hey, that guy used to produce a show for TLC. Fuck that guy. That's <laughs> actually it. It's always like, hey, that guy uh, made a joke about Mexicans on that's, a podcast. That is actually uh, the premise of one of the characters in Nathan Fielder's new show, The Curse. Yeah. Uh, ben Safty plays this like former TLC show creator that like his whole thing was like, it was called like burn something, like the burn of love. And it's about- a Burn bunch victims of, of love. It, it was about a bunch of people trying to get this guy like a bachelor situation but then it turns out he's wearing prosthetics and he's actually a terrible burn victim that's mm-hmm. incredible and it's just like totally ripping on TLC Rob the yeah, reason is because they're in the perfect level of the entertainment industry where nobody knows who the fuck they are yep yeah you can do that you can exploit and be horrible to human just beings cash as much checks, as you want baby. as long as your face as long as you, you're the wizard behind the curtain Rob what do you think we do Ugh. are we better no we exploit the hell out of people that came before us Yes, we're gonna be doing that History? today. We're gonna be doing that today, big time. Well, our show specifically. Yeah, usually the weird. If you're notable, let me let me see this. If you don't even have to be notable for our show. If you're if you're dead and you've been written about, you deserved it. You deserved it. If you if something uh-huh. happened to where I can find a story about you on the internet, you deserved it. You're a stone for us to step on. That's right. Let us use your skull and to get to the peak. When a curb stomp, you're, 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 you're de- decomposing skull. You're a shitty yes. step on our dumb Everest <laughs> all the way to the top. Let's get into it. All right. By, oh, by the way, leave a review on Apple. Okay. That helps a lot, too. We're trying to get to a Oh, thousand. we got a new review. You want me to read it? No, we'll do it at the end of the show. Uh, I think we should address it. Okay, Because uh, it. it kind of is perfect for what we just kind of addressed. Uh, really love you guys leaving reviews. Please and thank you. Uh, but, yeah, shout out to Peep the King Prawn. Who left a review that said "Yikes"? Oh yeah, is there salty? Dan salty about our negative review? No, I mean uh, it's fair and balanced. It just said "Yikes." Two stars. Uh, no, the review is titled "Yikes." Oh god, it says more. I got halfway through one episode, had to call it quits. Fair enough. Someone, thank not- you for at least giving us an opportunity to earn your business. I found the host to be disrespectful of women. Really? It seems that they were trying to be ironic about it, which can be great when it's done well. But they are definitely missing the mark, and it's just off-putting. They are trying hard to be funny, but that also missed the mark for me. <laughs> hey, man. Our apologies. Call it like Our you see bad. it, bro. Uh, also, How dare not every single person on fucking earth find me hilarious. They are trying hard to be funny, but that also missed the mark. I was actually interested in learning about the episode's topic, but the banter was not worth waiting through. Okay, Somebody's listening to this episode right now being like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. N- Notes track. Yeah, Off. they haven't even talked about the topic Off. yet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. But I will say, Fair, dude. at Fair. least they at least they understood that we were being ironic about the woman thing just and bad not at it. Yeah, we were just being bad. We just at suck. It. Yeah, it's like <laughs> it's like I don't think they're really that big of pieces of shit. They just missed the mark. And it's like okay, thank you. I can handle that note. Yeah, I, I'll <laughs> I'll take it. Yeah, it's better than being like some just chud being like they were racist. No, some well shit. now we just got demonetized because you dropped a hard F. Uh, well, you bleep it on YouTube, I guess. Well, now nah, we let it ride. A hard F. Oh, because I'm quoting Seth Rogen. Yeah, 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 whatever. I didn't say it. I mean, I did, but I said only, you know. Okay. Whatever. Anyway, leave a review, I guess, not like that one, unless you feel that way. Uh, But anyway, let's get get into this week's topic. 
we all know roughly, you know, we grew up with the story of uh, Sacagawea. Sacagawea? Sacagawea. Don't Sacagawea. take the Jew out of my Sacagawea. 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 I've always heard Sacagawea. I don't care. I truly don't care. Uh, but yeah, the Shoshone, Le- uh, Lemmy Shoshone Indian, who, you know, helped Lewis and Clark. Yes. Explore the newly purchased Louisiana Territory. We should make a shirt that's Sacagawea, and it's her just jacked up on whey. Whey. Whey protein? Whey protein. I uh, I think for Easter, I want to do an Easter shirt, two Easter shirts. Everything's canon, nothing's canon. Okay. Uh, I think it's good for me. I, get I think up. I might be the only person that buys the shirt, though. Think about how much she paddled that canoe, though. If she had whey protein, oh, she'd be so She'd buff. be a beast. Don't think she did any paddling. Do you know... Never mind. I'll tell you later. Off air. Yeah, off air. No, I was like, do you know how they know where they went? How? Like, oh, the poop. Went, the poop. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, they yeah. have like mercury or some shit. Yeah, yeah, shit, yeah, yeah. Or like lead or something. They I don't kept know. finding their poop everywhere. <laughs> Specifically, Lewis and or Clark. Bo- all Both. All the they, whole party. I mean, it was all, more than those three. Yeah, they all had some sort of like chemical in their crap <laughs> for, for whatever From reason. what? I don't remember. I'll we'll do an episode some on some weird shit yeah. they were eating. Yeah. Uh so obviously she's a, an American hero and though I'm sure there's I am sure there's some level of like far left weirdo, I hate the word woke, but woke uh you know, people who are like, "Oh, actually she's a, a, a traitor to other Indians or blah 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 for helping white people." Doesn't matter. Um that's not true. Sacagawea is great. It's full stop. I did enjoy the gold dollar. Yes. I it was kind of fun. To pretend like you were from a hundred years ago, just flipping dollar or coins, you're slamming up. down a gold coin. Yeah, it's fun to pretend you were from the EU. They uh, have dollar coins. Yeah, they have one euro coins. Be like, I'll have a McChicken sandwich, please. I'd be like, Oh, sorry, you need another like seven cents tax. Oh. Be like, just take the gold. God damn it, <laughs> just take gold. the fucking gold. But yeah, so Sacagawea, great. Uh, but America turns out. It's not the only country in the New World with a Sacagawea. Really? Um, yeah, I'm sure there's plenty of natives <laughs> that helped. Yeah, I'm sure along the way. I'm sure there's like in Central and South America. Uh, I'm sure. You know what? It must have been really hard when they were crossing across Panama. Like we, we really need. Was, <laughs> we really yeah. need to traverse it coast to coast. Here. I bet Cortez had a couple. Yeah, Cortez had one. That's who we're talking about. Today. Oh no way! Good call, Dan. First thing that comes to my mind is who could be the most evil piece of shit that Rob picks? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go Cortez. Cortez, yeah, yeah, safe bet. This is the story of La Manish, uh, La La Malinch. Sorry, La Malinch, uh, the Indian woman who helped Cortez conquer Mexico. If you want to throw out the T word, go ahead for her. Traitor? She might be. Well, we'll get into it because I'm a just lot calling of, my shit. There she, are some people who believe that. Um, I imagine she helped significantly she might be more responsible than cortez himself <laughs> i i don't know You're hitting a lot of points that come later in this cortez said uh beh- listen sh- cortez said she was the most responsible for his conquest of mexico behind only god i wow am just pointing to center field and call my shot you know the the quote behind every great man there's a greater woman it's actually about her yeah mm-hmm. yeah yeah that cortez said that was there a sexual relationship here? There sure was. Oh, jeez. Mm. He was banging her. Oh no. She actually gave birth to his own or his firstborn son. Okay. So he, he was married, by the way, but not to her. Okay. He at least felt things for her. Mm. What does feel in this context? I think he did. I think he did. Personally. Physically, at least, right? He, he was tr- stuck physically. her, stuck his peen in her. <sighs> does that mean anything? Well, he felt something. Unless it was just totally numb down there. All right. He. Maybe it was means to end. Like, did he, he lusted, but did he love? Is the question. I think there might. I think he might have felt enough. Uh, I think there was an attraction there. If I had to guess, based on, I mean, they just went through a lot. Together. I, I was about to say it's kind of like, what's the statistic? It's like the longer you work next to someone, like the more attractive they become. Right. And, work and they were yeah. working together in a. Uh, That's I why guess I what think Rob's call. beautiful. Yeah, we've been work- together for essentially ten years now, so it's been a long time. Mm-hmm. Rob's they, gorgeous. They were working together in a high stakes environment, so to speak. Yeah, it's like God, we got to get this report done. Yeah, it's, <laughs> I mean, it's you know, uh, we got to get the, we got to conquer this Aztec city, or we're gonna die before we die. 
I have one thing to say to you. Get, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not going to. I don't know what Cortez is shot. So, uh, did she light the boats on fire? She did not, no. Lama Lynch was born sometime between 1500 and 1505 to most likely a noble family in a city state on uh, the Mexican Gulf Shore uh, in the eastern, sort of in the eastern Aztec Empire. In the, it's in the current state of Veracruz oh, um, okay. in, in Mexico. Uh, the city state was basically like a, a client state of the Aztecs, a, a tributary. They basically owed protection money to the Aztecs type of situation. Um, it's arguably inside of what you could claim as at the Aztec imperial borders, though the Aztecs kind of had, from what I could tell from the maps I looked up, sort of a um, hardcore inner circle of like, this is Aztec country, and then a sort of much larger circle of like, we just run these, these people pay us, yeah, and they, we can come and do whatever we want in these areas. They're the sun. And then, like, there's little planets. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. It's certainly in the, fully in their sphere of influence. Right. They can exactly. do whatever they want to these people, I think, more or less. Um, a lot of sources called her an Aztec noble wo- woman, but I don't think that's true from everything I read. I think she was not Aztec at, uh, at all. She, obviously, she was native, but she was not Aztec. I think she was, her ethnicity or identity or whatever you want to call it was probably tied up initially in that city state she was born in. Perhaps a tribe that the Aztecs stomped down. Yeah, I just That's, said they yeah. were they were from a city that the Aztecs were taking pr- prote- protection racket money from. It was like a, I'm just going to say I think she was probably enemies with the Aztecs. If I was to guess. Okay. It's like waiting it out just like one day we'll get our shit like, back. This god man will come we'll, off a boat. Yeah, one day this angel Cortez who was so angelic. Well, I'm not sure she liked anybody. A good She's out for number one. That's fine. Yeah. Because her cozy upbringing as a noble woman did not last long. Sometime between the age of eight and 12, she was kidnapped and sold into slavery. As the Aztecs did. Uh, this was a, not the Aztecs, potentially. I don't know who kidnapped her, but we do know where she ended up. As everyone did, Jake. As everyone Let's did. Let's put it out there. Everyone had slaves. Not everyone. Everyone. Everyone, everyone has slaves. Aborigines. Slaves, 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 slaves. I don't know. They may have. That that was the uh, biggest fucking, th- were the craziest part about the uh, Trail Tears. Not only did they force the natives to go to Oklahoma, they also had their slaves go with them too. <laughs> the native slaves, yeah, yikes! I'm like, oh no, that's that's there a, is a different funny, visual for me. There now. is a funny like, it's not really a thing, but you can get it like if you really dig deep into, sort of like the dialogue between. Native Americans and African Americans, like these are like deep history dialogues, but like Na- African Americans are like, fuck you, you own slaves too. And Native Americans are like, fuck you, you were kind of colonizers too. You showed up. The ones that, the ones of you that were free started owning property. You're yeah. not from here. You displaced us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Everyone's displaced. Mm-hmm. Everybody, uh, yeah, it, it's not a big, it's not a big argument because they've both got a bigger, whiter fish to fry. You but, on land mm-hmm. right now? You're a colonizer. Most likely. 99%. No one's supposed to be here. Human beings were nowhere near here. I like the thought that, uh, you know what, it's actually just the evil was here and we everyone found it. <laughs> <laughs> like the Native Americans were like, huh, we can kill each other? Let's fucking war. Let's fucking go. Yeah, and then more people show up and just, the game is here. This is where the game lives. Mm-hmm. And you find it. So some people say there was a a, uh, a tradition, I, tradition of the right word, but a lot of times when a parent died, kid or kids would be sold into slavery uh, specifically your father died as is slavery, tradition yes, yes essentially to like pay off debts or to just like get some money that's like, pay li- for that's funeral like li- costs. life insurance is actually just to is a child that you sell to slavery when right caskets aren't cheap that's insane that was the policy for a while people did it <sighs> it's so good now they're not sure that happened though some people did say her mom sold her after her dad died and they had then- to go to like a native american morgue and the guy's just like fucking boning them left and right like well you got to cover you know this smoke and yeah. this powder that's not cheap yeah you're gonna need uh what are you looking at here i mean the the cheapest feathers we have uh for you know the incense uh spreading is uh is a, you know it's five gold pieces i don't know what they fu- what their fucking money is but. i'm just saying now like banks just kind of give up if you don't pay them long enough <laughs> like back then they're like all right you're a slave now it's better now it's better now so, yeah, some people say her mom sold her to help pay things off. 
Uh, and then they also say she threw a sham funeral. Okay. <laughs> just to like cover up that she sold the daughter. Um, <laughs> Fucking A. How do you orchestrate that? I don't know. Yeah. It's probably not Probably true. easy back then. I, mean, I, mean, I guess, yeah. I guess it could be easy. Just probably like, oh, and, super and easy. I swear there's a guy in there. You don't even close casket. Sorry, or, or I swear there's a girl in there. Or yeah. Closed yeah. canoe. I don't know. <laughs> closed canoe. But uh, yeah, so she was. I think it's more likely she was kidnapped. You know, some ra- she was out doing something. Raiders came, snatched her. She never came home. And you know, you're being fucking referred gone. to as a raider, sick. Bandit raider. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I'm not big on bandit. I'd I'd prefer raider. Raider. Like if the Thunderdome happens, society collapses. I want to be referred to as a raider. I'm a Ridley Green Raider. Is that your high school mascot? That's my high school mascot. Hmm, that was a Rattler. Why? You're in Florida. We are the only team in the state of Florida with that mascot. Are there rattlesnakes? Uh, ask FAMU. FAMU is also the Rattlers. Okay, but are there rattlesnakes? We have rattlesnakes, yeah. Okay. Our Should mascot it? was a native, so I don't really know the, the Ridley history of Native Americans. I bet there were. I bet you guys at had at some point in time Native Americans certainly. <laughs> I lived guess there. you. I bet you guys had an insane mascot at one time that was just so bad. You know, I block it out. <laughs> like mo- most of it's high school, it's just like it's just like a fucking guy with the most feathers holding a hatchet, running, mm-hmm. bloodshot eyes. We do the Florida State thing. Guy r- rides out on a horse. Yeah, but it's just not respectful. That's actually how Smarty Jones broke his leg. Came out on our field. You looking for it? I mean, I found like the mascot uh-huh. mascot, but I like the drawing of That's it. That's actually sick. It yeah, looks like dope. an Indian in the cupboard. Yeah, but I don't see like a guy dressed up as one, unfortunately. No, I was just hoping they had like a life-size Cleveland Indian running around. No, we don't have Chief Wahoo. Yeah. Unfortunately, yours was more of a Washington Redskins type of mascot. Which yeah. whatever, or like the Illini Chief Illinois mascot. That's back a the, sick one. It's so good. The Illini one is awesome. People of Delco are gonna love this content. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's for you, Delco. You them. Oh yeah. Anyway, uh, so e- whether or not she was sold or stolen, she would definitely ended up a slave. Um, so she was eventually taken to a major port city near the Yucatan and sold to some uh, Chontal Mayans. Some Mayans. That's a long way. To go. From Veracruz to the Yucatan? Yeah. That's it was long only on foot. Yeah, it's long. It's a trek. What else yeah. are you going to do? What Gaze else you going to do? A lot of people that had nothing else to do never went that far on foot. I would get bored. Yeah, I, I, I think would. I'd, I'd you join. Because you have raider blood. Mm-hmm. That's right. got to go see. Got to go when take. We, it's like when we watched, um, what the fuck, what, Apocalypto. You're one of those guys that raids the village Yeah, to steal Most people likely. for the sacrifice. Most likely. Yeah. Northmen, same thing. Same diff. Yeah. All the same. So she was taken to this port city and sold to Mayans. It uh, wasn't long, though, before the Spanish would show up and ruin this harmonious utopian paradise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Everything was great until the Spaniards <laughs> got there. Is the Sunshine idea and rainbows. <laughs> the idea that anything wasn't shit wall to wall before anyone okay. else showed up. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah, let's look. It's not like the Spanish made it better. I'm not saying that. No. I'm just saying it already you know, wasn't good. It was probably a nightmare with the animals that you had to kind of fend off and the other tribes, but surely it was like cleaner. Right? Before the, the Spaniards the got there? The Tanaka clan uh, had a really good sewer system, from what I recall. Actually, yeah, they had an amazing floating city system, I think. Yeah, they? it was yeah. like a, like a kind of half Ven- Venice, half Rome. That was I imagine like capital? the entire North American and South American continents were kind of like going to a national park, but it was the entire region. Maybe. I mean, they had a lot of good stuff. You know what they didn't have? Boomsticks. Electricity. The bullet thing. Well, we didn't have that. No one Either. had it. <laughs> Air conditioning. No yeah. one had that. The best thing Certainly ever no one created. Had that. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually counter that. Um, I think there would be more spaces like a national park, Dan, but I can't explain to you how much just boring flatness there probably would be, too. Oh, for sure. Like just mangroves. Where the buffalo roam. Yeah. Mangroves and grasslands. Like, that's what I think of. I bet they had some gnarly tornadoes. Oh, my God. God. absolutely nothing in the way. Nothing to stop. Can you imagine just that strip from like Kansas City to Dallas? But oh. these jungles had to be awful because gross. There's yeah. like no paths. You have to cut through all these. But they did. Thick leaves. They did. 
That's the fucked up thing is that they did. Well, they probably used like game trails too for that. Like no, I mean, they cut straight roads. They're finding like using lidar and shit. They're finding like whole ass roads and shit in mine jungles. The problem really? is if a city goes out, if a city goes away in the jungle, the jungle eats it in like a year, and you never see it again. Yeah, yeah. that's uh, there's probably so much we still don't know about the Amazon. They're finding a lot of it. The lidar is helping a lot because like, it really shows like basically straight line patterns. You're getting so stuck in like quicksand. If That's where one gonna, place. Uh, yeah, if there is somewhere that has it, it's the Amazon rainforest. So a couple more uh, notes for on her growing up so far on Lama Lynch. Growing up so far, uh, she grew up as nobility, which means uh, she learned both the courtly language of the region as well as n- obviously she had to know the common ethnic language in the uh, in the area. She's got a code switch. As w- yeah, uh, uh, once she was sold to the Mayans. She learned two different dialects of Mayan language as well. So she's smart. Four languages she got in the can mm-hmm. before she even meets Cortez. It's impressive. So Cortez lands in Mexico, faces off pretty early in his expedition against some Mayans. Hmm. There's a battle at uh, Pontichan, uh, the capital city of the kingdom of Tabasco. Mm. Whoa. That's cool. What's a battle like that with the Mayan civilization like? Hard, I imagine. Is it in an open field? Is it yes. like guerrilla warfare? This battle was more or less in an open field. So on March 15th, I think 15th, 1519, Cortez fights the Battle of Centla. They're not just like sniping you from their pyramids? Nope. Wait, it's in an open field? Easy. Easy fight then for Spain. So they outnumber the Spanish as always a like four to one. I think at one point, I think one Spanish soldier said for every one of us, there's 300 of them. Yeah, only so many people you can fit on a boat. No wonder they were killing two million people a year. (laughs) Right? That was the number? Two million people a day. It was 250,000 people a year, yeah, sacrificed. Mm. They wanted to make it a fair fight. Yeah, fair. So he fights a battle with the Kingdom of Tabasco. Despite being, of course, massively outnumbered, the Spanish kicked the shit out of the Mayans. Thanks to their better weapon tech and one even more important reason, the Indians thought the Spanish had centaurs. <laughs> Fuck yeah, dude. <laughs> Riding on horses. They thought that the cavalry, that the person and horse were the same beast. Oh, God. That does blow my mind. Not necessarily in South America, but like the Comanches and everything didn't have horses before we got here. No one in the That's two That's crazy to think. Yeah. I thought I would have thought America Actually, had horses. Actually, hor- horses did exist here uh, at the same time as natives, but they died out or migrated back up across. They were across. Also uh, slightly different. They too. were slightly different. Yeah. yeah. They were a different kind of horse. And I don't think they ever domesticated them. Okay. No. There's, yeah. The history of horses coming soon. But that blows my mind. Yeah. I don't, I don't know why. It shouldn't surprise me, but. It does every time. It also cracks me up that like whenever you read about it, it's like people. For, we were riding horses for a while, and then someone's like, "You know, it would be nice, like a place to put your feet." Stirrups. When does stirrups? It was so late in the game. It was. It, it's astonishing when stirrups come about. You're like, nah. wait, what? Stirrups are for bitches. <laughs> it's the best thing. It's like using the pad when you squat. No. Uh, 300 CE was the earliest known pair of stirrups in China. Some some date it back to the second century BC. Oh, Chinese are the first ones on everything. But nice, because they're soft people. I guess the 800s is by the time. So, but like the Romans and stuff were riding no stirrups, anything like that. What a miserable experience! Any fucking great cavalry unit I- in um, ancient times, nothing. That's uh, probably why the Egyptians preferred chariots to regular horse cavalry or whatever yeah i uh, do they credit that like 800 to one of the ottoman not maybe not ottoman, not but, ottoman um, i don't um, know one of the caliphates though i i, uh, I uh, imagine I it's a, a, a arabian peninsula invention stirrups like uh, that's when it gets I'm popularized seeing asia asia i oh, guarantee okay. somebody came up with it in like medieval europe and they got laughed at like what are you soft you bitch? <laughs> you soft? You, don't want, you, you can't oh, You afraid. can't have your feet dangle off the horse. I'll tell you what. I hate having my feet dangle anywhere. It's the worst feeling. It's probably. I mean, look. I'm sure the first person to wear a seatbelt got laughed at too. True. You feel like a little kid at Thanksgiving table. If you're at a high top that doesn't have a crossbar. Oh, it's awful. You're just. Like, what do I do? Is this makes me feel youthful. That that's exactly how I feel, which I don't like. I feel like a child. <laughs> I feel like a kid in a big chair. You know. 
Sometimes I like that. Okay. So, obviously, the Spanish won. Their horse, centaur people, uh, really scared the shit out of them. The next day, the Mayans, as was tradition in the region or for their culture or whatever, uh, brought the Spanish gifts for winning the battle. Hey, guys, good game. They got Yeah, they were like, hey, you did it, and we owe you stuff now. They so do like a jersey swap. <laughs> it's a one-way swap. It's yeah. like you've won our jersey. Cortez and the homies didn't give them some armor. Yeah. yeah. Just weighs them down incredibly. <laughs> they can't hold it. So like, This is broken. Give it to them. Yeah. They got gold, jewelry, animal skins, and re- animals from the region, feathers of precious birds, and also 20 female slaves. Word. Mm, one Word. of them being Lama Lynch. Okay. Mm. Mm. This is the origin story. Yeah. And so the Spanish were like, oh, cool. You guys do slaves too? Sick. Awesome. Awesome. It's crazy that made it over here. Yeah. <laughs> Like, uh, the dude, women, the, the Spanish happily accepted the women, uh, baptized them, and then handed them out to uh, the men to. to be servants and sex slaves. Yeah, of course. They can't be dirty. Wash them with the Lord. No. Hey, yeah, you're going to rape a Christian, buddy. <laughs> no pagans here. Yeah. Uh, Malinch was uh, initially given to one of Cortez's captains, but once her language skills were discovered... Uh, when the Spanish were, they were discovered when the Spanish were first interacting with some of the first uh, emissaries from Montezuma that they encountered, uh, Cortez took her from the captain and was like, "You speak all these languages." So they had an interpreter who spoke like one mm-hmm. uh, in native language uh, and Spanish. La Malinche didn't speak any Spanish at first, but she spoke obviously, like I said, four or five native languages. So, but and she spoke the the language that their interpreter spoke. Got it. So, so she yeah. could talk to them, then talk to the interpreter, then the interpreter would give it to Spanish and Cortez to Cortez brr, back down the telephone line. Um, I'm sure Cortez saw that immediately and was like, "Let's just get rid of this interpreter." Uh, well, she didn't know Spanish yet. Oh, yes. So anyway, he promised her more quote more than liberty if she helped. So he's like, "You're gonna get all the stuff, okay. including my penis, if if you help us out here." Um, but don't worry, Cortez's captain did uh, get a different slave girl. He didn't. Ju- he wasn't just out in the cold with no slave girl. They're not swapping either. What? You can't be sharing your slave girl. No, 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 no. So he got another one, just in case anyone was worried about him getting screwed over. <laughs> yeah, I was like, really? Like, what about that one guy? Yeah, hey, hold on a minute. That's not fair. Yeah. He did just as much. He's a brave captain. And he was one of Cortez's boys, too. Um like this guy in particular, I forget what the connection was, but they were close. Uh, so Malinch helped bridge the language chain between Spain's interpreter and the natives. Uh, the chain actually got insane at one point where like even she didn't know a language. So at one point, something had to be translated into Mayan, then Nahuatl, which is kind of her native language, then Totonac before reaching uh, the locals who spoke to Tonak, whose answer then had to go back through that same chain all the way up to Spanish. And then Spanish is in there, too. So it's like a four-language chain. It's a bad game of Whisper Down the Land. I was about to say, yeah, Telephone must have sucked with orders on that. It's like, you can't be right. It's like 10 minutes for a fucking sentence. Yeah. It's uh, it's a lot. And actually, that, that game of Telephone comes into play. I'm sure it does. That sounds like a, a, like a fucking nightmare. So... um. The Totonac were the first people Cortez met uh, who told him, like, so he had heard of Montezuma and the Aztecs already to an extent. They were the regional hegemon, and so it was like everyone kind of knew who they were. And so the Totonac, though, were the first ones who were like, hey, you know, everyone's like, oh, we're with the Aztecs and stuff like that. We fucking hate them. <laughs> we fucking hate them. <laughs> and Cortez was like, oh, word? Well, that's pretty interesting do you tell will, yeah you will, and soon they formed an alliance and started marching toward the aztec capital of tenochtitlan need bodies need yeah. bodies now it was a combined force of spanish and teutonic soldiers before they got to tenochtitlan though they're like they, the special teams members the uh, dude sometimes you just yeah you need numbers special teams is important you need a gunner yeah you need someone that's going to rush that punt ask the 49ers man special teams Loses you championships. The third aspect of the game. People forget. So before they got to uh, the Aztec capital, they stopped in Tlaxcala. Initially, these people were hostile to the Spanish, but Lama Lynch 
was able to help negotiate not only a peace, but an alliance. The Tlaxcalans, when you look at a map of the Aztec Empire in 1520 when Cortez was there, whatever, it's this whole big swath, and then there's one part in the middle that is not part of the empire or a tributary state, and that is Tlaxcala. Completely surrounded by the empire. Okay. Not a part of the empire, not paying tribute to the empire. How they swing they've they've held, The Vatican just, City of the Aztecs? They've it's, just somehow held out. But it wouldn't be like that because like, Italy's not invading But Vatican. Italy invades the fuck out of them. That's why they have the Swiss guards. Oh, I guess that's true. Yeah. They set up pikes yeah. at the border. Yeah. I, it's a spear when wall. It was, when it was a kingdom dumb, a bunch of different kingdoms and like stuff. Yeah. Yeah, sure. When it wasn't like, it, there was not, Vatican City was established before there was an Italy. That would actually be hilarious if Italy invaded the Vatican. That would be funny. It'd be funny if they lost. <laughs> right. I think they would. <laughs> Dude, the Swiss Guard's better than you think. I mean, they're not going to do anything, but. Also, God can just. I Smite. mean, that's the ultimate fucking card to play. Just comes out with his lightning hands. Just, just like, not even like lightning hands, just like a thumb squishing an ant. <laughs> like, just, eh, It's like yeah. a Monty Python cartoon. Yes, exactly. Like, like a the, foot. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's like, nope. Flicks away your tank. <laughs> Boo. That'd be awesome. Can you imagine being in a tank that gets flicked by God? Imagine how far it goes. They would release him from underneath the Vatican. He's all chained up like magnet. So that's basically actually the end of Thor Ragnarok. <laughs> like the Italian army shows up and says to, you know, the Pope, they're like, you can't defeat me. And he's like, I, I know. But he but can. can. And then, yeah, the God just rawr, pops out. Did that really happen? Yes. It, Jake uh, doesn't uh, watch Marvel movies. But it's a you famous guys lie to me about It's a so meme, much, though. It's he's a meme. too cool. I know. It is a meme and everyone should get that reference. I don't. On a meme alone, everyone should get that reference. I don't believe in the internet. I kind of know you don't. <laughs> at That's this point it's why our numbers are down <laughs> really is it yeah i blame you it's, it's your fault yeah i'm the big personality of the three <laughs> of us here yeah that's what you brought me on for you're the ringer yeah <laughs> they're like god jake will at least get us numbers so the spanish after they're making an alliance with the uh Tlax collins were given food and more chicks no way it kind of had to rule to be a Spanish soldier on this trip, right? Oh, yeah. Especially if you think you're ordained by God to get these women. You're like, I don't feel nothing bad right yeah, now. Like, like, I, yeah, like, I mean, look, they're doing, they're not doing anything different than any conquering army through history at this point in time. Oh, yeah. But, and after that point in time, for a large, to a large extent. But Do you think there was, like, one nice soldier that would try to court his slave? Probably. Yeah, probably. Probably someone, like, so devout that they're just like, yeah, we must pray. And I, and you will respect me, but I must earn that respect. Mm -hmm. Some weird shit like that. And everyone's like, God, Juan sucks. <laughs> <laughs> we get it. You're a soldier of Christ. <laughs> like, fucking A, man. Just, like, not into it. They're like, Juan, not today. Yeah. God damn it. Just look who I, I'm trying to have fun. We're in Tlaxcala. Yeah, he's just running around like in a damn, what is it, Ridley Scott movie. Yeah. He's just That's like what, a, when the last uh, batch party I was at in Tulum when that one guy was like, we're married. We shouldn't have sex with prostitutes. I'm like, we're in Tulum. Do you remember? Because you were, oh, you were already having sex with that prostitute. Yeah, you were, Jake. And I've actually never been to Tulum. <laughs> oh, yeah, I forgot. I've never been to Tulum. Um, it's on it's his great. bucket list, though. He wants to go to the uh, jungle gym. Jungle gym? The Tulum jungle gym. Is there, I, it wouldn't surprise me if there's a gym. There a gym? Is there like it's, a, a, it's an influencer gym. Is yeah. there a CrossFit box in the jungle? It's just on the beach. If you're in Tulum, you have to go to the all place. the weights are made out of like the tree and I hate all of that. Tulum has like one spot that I every bachelorette party story I've ever seen has like this checkerboard pool where it's like tan and white and like everyone goes to the same fucking hotel. But back I to swear to God. Jake fucking that prostitute in Tulum. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So glad my family and my wife's family and stuff like that listens to this. Thanks, guys. Yeah, you weren't there when Gary was like, "Come on, we're married," and I was like, "Jake ain't even here anymore." <laughs> You guys suck. <laughs> <laughs> I've never had sex with a prostitute. <laughs> <laughs> Got to clear that up. I just really have to do it because, like, just in case anyone's listening, I don't know who, but we not even like I, I know. I know Katie's like they're being assholes, but like there's someone yeah, that we get a review. It's like this is Katie's mob. I know they were trying to be ironic with their prostitute talk, but didn't they didn't land. nail it. Didn't they land. Didn't nail it. it. Really missed the mark. <laughs> <laughs> the plane crashed. This uh, is the only thing Dan's going to clip, too, for social. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't matter what I clip. We don't post it anymore. That's right. It's uh, for us. It's really just, just for, for us. us. Like, it's for our text. Video. Yeah. 
So, uh, a couple days, Cortez left Tlaxcala to continue on to the Aztec capital. Now with his force, Totonic allied soldiers and soldiers from Tlaxcala. So he picked up another army. He's now got two... Tectonic army? The ta- Totonic. Mm. Totonac. I thought it was just like crab people coming from the tectonic plates. <laughs> the, yeah, it's yeah, like it the, the mole people coming The Fantastic up. Four guy. The thing or the whatever. The thing, yeah. yeah. It's him. Played by Cousin in the latest iteration. Eben Mock whatever. Quincy? John Quincy, yeah. Yeah, only Quincy? refer to him as Quincy now. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, now he has, an, he has two... Two city states worth of soldiers on top of his own. Now, why did the Tlaxcala join the Spanish? You might wonder. Uh, like I said, they were not actually under Aztec rule, but the, uh, they still hated them because they were in a perpetual state of war with the Aztecs. Yeah. This, but it was not the type of war you think. Oh. And I'm not going to get into it too deep because I actually want to do a whole episode on these as well. Um, I, it, it's it's too interesting to to even like it was just Rochambeau to. they kicked them in the nuts then they returned fire with kicking the other kind of nuts. honestly not f- not terribly far off it's called the flower wars or the garland wars and it was essentially like if you combined college football and ancient warfare okay it was like half sport half war you sent 30 but people died the field yes it was like it's just champion versus champion. it was even numbers on both sides and stuff like that and the aztecs man they were the alabama of this shit and the tlax collins fucking hated them i would be down for that why don't we do that more like war shouldn't be dragged over years it should be you okay. send your, you send your guys we'll send our guys meet on a field send your best 30 yeah i think 30 on 30 why yeah. would any country with a lot of people do I that agree that it's like no we'll just continue to send people yeah until you give up because i believe in america rob I believe so did america the, they just kept sending people i have <laughs> the best we have the best athletes and fighters in the world let's go we're not losing Dagestan. Fuck that. I kind of like the strategy. We're not losing to Dagestan now yeah. with what we currently have. I, I like the current strategy of just completely overwhelm them with money and people. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm just trying culture. to tear guys. And culture. Yeah. I mean, how sick would it be that one year, like, Panama just randomly wins the the world they wars? They just run the world. For oh, just every year we have a world we war. We have a world war with every country. Yeah, and then just they get to make, whoever wins gets to make you the You get rules. to run NATO or, like, the U.N., you just one world government, and hey, man, you know what, Paraguay, good job, you did it. Yeah, you're in charge. Yeah. So anyway, this shit got really bitter between Tlaxcala and the Aztecs, uh, who, like I said, they were like the Bama of the Flower Wars, and the Tlaxcalans were just fucking sick of it. They wanted the Aztecs to get their comeuppance, but before they could get to Tenochtitlan, Clan, there was one other stop on the way. City of we're just it's like very hot sauce themed march to the Aztec capital Cholula. Yeah, I mean, th- you gotta imagine the people from these kingdoms would see the sauces now and be like, just watch white people cry from them. The yeah. kingdom yeah. of Franks, Franks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Franks yeah. red hot. Put that shit on everything. Yeah, uh, there's the Sriracha kingdom as well. It's just a small Asian polity on the western <laughs> yes. side of Mexico. It's a, it's a little uh, just enclave. Yeah, yeah from Thailand. I mean, I do like that story. Remember when we talked about people showing up to the Americas? About, so, like, we're pretty sure some Incans are near the Incan Empire. Some Polynesians landed, and they were like, those guys are perverts. They'll fuck anything, and we had to kill them. <laughs> do you not remember that the story? The Polynesians said that about the Incans? No, the Incans said that about the Polynesians. They are like, they were huge. They were perverts. <laughs> and we had to kill them. <laughs> I don't remember. Oh, that. my God. It was the, it's like the funniest thing I've ever read about people arriving in the Americas. They literally, like, these people came. It was, like, definitely Polynesians because they're, like, they're humongous. They came on these big canoe boats. But then, yeah, they're islanders. And sure. they were, like, and they just wanted to fuck everything. They sound like a good hang. Do they? I don't know. Someone busts into your house oh, with they're a not, canoe parked they're not on the asking. front lawn. They're not asking. I don't think so. It's it's more of and a. And they're, like, they're mm, like way bigger than you. This is an old Christmas celebration. Uh, they were just Can you imagine that? A canoe crashes through the wall of your house. You come downstairs. <laughs> there's an eight-foot man fucking wheeler. The dog got just <laughs> running train on my dog? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it would, I would slowly go back upstairs and be like, sorry, bud. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, man. Just like, hands up, and you creep slowly back. <laughs> it's like, you're n- All right. I don't know if you didn't see anything. You're essentially a, a the no, person the, version the, of the, a Megazord. Did the police come an hour later, and they find two giants stabbed to death? They're like, what happened? They're like, dude, I had to kill them. <laughs> they... 
they this my canoe dog. just fucking popped in. They started fucking the dog and the couch and everything. I had to. The cops were like, yeah, all right. Fine. Um, so the pl- people of Cholula, they hosted the Spanish and their allied armies for several days. But then according to the conquistadors, they stopped. And apparently the people of Cholula were setting them up for an Aztec ambush. Oh, no. But the Spanish found out and took their vengeance via a preemptive strike. <laughs> Wait a minute. So can we c- confirm that they were being set up? It's coming right for us. <laughs> Is that what that sounds like? It's like we're doing a preemptive strike to their preemptive strike. They're like, we fa- they found out they betrayed them, and so they were like, we're g- going to attack you before you can attack us. Do you think that really we'll get happened? to it? Is and this they where the slaughtered the entire city. Is this where the telephone game happened? Not yet, no. Okay. According to legend, Lama Lynch was the one who uncovered the plot. She was approached by a Cholula noblewoman who promised her uh, her son in marriage if she betrayed the Spanish. So in her noble son to Lama Lynch. And she was like, you'd be one of us. You'd be a part of the noble class here. And Lynch was like, oh, sounds great. Tell me the whole plan. And, um, <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm in. And so they told her the whole plan. And she immediately turned, went to Cortez and was like, hey. Smart. Hey, they're about to set you up. Yeah. Uh, Getting some brownie points with head honcho? Yeah. Absolutely. In later centuries, this story has often been cited as an example of Lama Lynch's, quote, betrayal of her people. No, that's just being on the right side. Yeah, it's seeing the landscape and going with the intelligent choice. I'm th- are you hundreds, if not thousands of miles from my home. My life's been torn apart anyway. I'm trying to live. Well, can I walk it back even further than it's, it's you know, uh, the smart choice and she was just looking out for number one or whatever? Yeah. I don't think yeah. that it's even fair to call the Cholulans her people. No. She wouldn't have viewed them as her people. Absolutely not. She wasn't from there. Yeah. It's it's honestly a bit reductive and sort of like put projecting back on history and a, a little racist, to be honest, to be like, oh, bo, they're both brown and from Central Mexico. They're the same. They like, didn't view each other. So she's like, I grew up in this city state before being a fucking slave over here. This is a different city state that I have. No, I mean, we're both Aztec tributaries, I guess, but we are ethnically different in my mind. We are culturally different in my mind. I'm sorry, like Rob. Saying, do you not consider people from Iowa your people? No. <laughs> kind of, actually, because we're culturally actually. the same. We're Midwestern and everything. But I wouldn't consider a Swedish person my people. Like, if, But someone outside might be like, well, they're white, white and white, so yeah. It's like, no, dude. like Canadian? I would, no, I, would, I don't c- consider a Canadian. A Canadian's like maybe a cousin. No, I mean, but, but like, I don't feel strong. Imagine about them. like going up to someone, like if someone from outside a country, and be like, in Birmingham, Alabama, be like, oh, you're like the people from Delaware. Yeah, They'd be like, shut the fuck up. Yeah, They'd be like, fuck you. They'd fight you. Like, in a there's very- actually a lot of parallels between Delaware and Alabama. Oh yeah, name them. Good football. <laughs> you're right, the Blue Hens. I mean, probably Delaware's put a better quarterback in a league than Alabama ever has. Mm, that's not true. <laughs> Joe Namath. Joe Flacco. Joe Flacco is better than every Joe metric Namath. Yeah, than Joe yeah, yeah. Namath. Joe Namath stinks. Um, that's a terrible. The only example. one. Uh, who? The, Bart Starr would be the argument. You're right. Bart Starr would be the argument. I would also argue. I'll take Flacco. Two is fine. Yeah, but Tua's he's fine? not on Flacco's level yet. Or Jalen Hurts. Neither on Flacco's level yet. Flacco has one <sighs> Super Bowl ring. Yeah. He did, he, mm. he, I, yeah. I can't argue with you. Because Super Bowls count for things. They do, but. It's a 53 man roster. Okay, here's another thing. But they need to they need to have the longevity the of Joe Flacco. They have not put up his numbers. Comeback yet. player of the year. He did beat Demar Hamlin, who literally I, died. I'm just saying that, yeah. like, he, Joe Flacco beat a man that died for comeback player of the year. He deserves it too, because that would have been because he made the Browns okay. I think everyone bet on Demar Hamlin to win that, and every sports betting site was like hey nfl yeah back to uh the start of this this program the right conspiracy? here conspiracy the sports conspiracy they just pulled the rug from underneath everybody yeah. they're like, like oh you thought demar hamlin was a lock no sir i'm just going to say uh look obviously the uh, league is different now but joe flacco's top 20 all time in passing yards so let's just pump the brakes on two and them until they maybe have a longer career okay. i'm not saying they're not as talented or more talented he's no john parker wilson <laughs> all right <laughs> He's no Brody Croyle. Yeah. Hey, John Parker Wilson, <laughs> solely off... Uh, Two days? Yeah, Hoover <laughs> yeah. High. <laughs> yeah. 
So for now, Flacco ahead. Although I'm not saying he's you know more like just God given gifted than them. Uh, either way, um, wait the Flacco thing. We're still on that. Okay, no, nah, I'm sorry, we're done. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, but the Cholulans were not her people. I I I just that's an <laughs> asinine thing. That's an asinine take, uh, in my opinion. But it doesn't matter because it's all bullshit. It definitely didn't happen that way. It didn't happen that they definitely slaughtered the Cholulans, but it didn't happen that way. Almost certainly, what probably really happened is that um, the Tlax Collins were fucking furious with the Cholulans. Oh. Because for a long time, the Cholulans and Tlax Collins were allies, holding out against the Aztecs, fl- their flower war bros, or whatever. And then the Cholulans, through either money or f- you know, just a foot on the neck or whatever, flip-flopped and became a client state slash ally uh, of the Aztecs, they joined the which conference. fully enveloped the Tlax Collins completely made oh, them surrounded. That sucks. So the Tlax Collins were like fuck and that was only a couple years before Cortez showed up too. Like two, three years before Cortez showed up that happened. So yeah. this is fresh. This isn't even like generational anger. No, I mean this is just everyone's mad. Yeah. Everyone's mad. Ladder so, of bones. <laughs> Yep. In order to strengthen his alliance with the Tlax Collins, and allegedly uh, the Tlax Collins asked him to do this as a sort of like litmus test of his dedication to them, Cortez just slaughtered the fucking Cholulans. And then Cortez made the ambush story up uh, to justify to the king of Spain why he completely slaughtered this town. I love that they could just kind of wing an excuse for war crimes because war crimes didn't exist, but like they were like, you right. know. And also but the that Spanish still were like, don't just slaughter. I was, was going to say, they actually had to come up with an excuse to do I so. was yeah. surprised by that, to be honest Dude, with you. Columbus got put in jail for being too cruel to Indians. Really? In Spanish jail. Um, That's incredible. Because he didn't ride for Spain. <laughs> it, was, it was a very kettle black moment. By Spain. I know. You're being too cruel. Excuse me? What? This is That was happening like the same time. He was the Inquisition a scapegoat. was going on in Spain. Yeah. He was a scapegoat because he was Italian and they're like, he's not one of us. Yeah. Yeah. It's easy. It's like firing a, a line coach. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Or like a DC or something. Yeah. Like a strength and conditioning coach. Yeah. So. That's why. Finally, after slaughter- slaughtering the Cholulans, the combined forces reached Tenochtitlan in early November 1519, where they were met by Montezuma on a causeway leading into the city. Um, Montezuma came to, you know, talk and negotiate with the Spanish. Lama Lynch was completely in the middle of the event, and by this point, she spoke Spanish. So I would she, hope. she was doing the. She How was the fuck else is she going to communicate with Cortez? <laughs> yeah, I know, right? So she the, her, the other translators just there while they're banging. That would be hot. He's like, he asked if you liked that. She's like, Have you hooked I up don't. with anybody that you did not speak a single word of the same language with? No. No. I wish. That'd be sweet. That's never happened to me. Like a French chick is who I'd prefer, but. French is what you go with, huh? French chick. D- yeah. d- I, that surprises me zero. You're right. And then you would be. It would be a, a Latin. Any Spanish speaking yeah. thing. Actually, or Portuguese, because Brazilian. Yeah. Or Portugal, I guess. They do speak Portuguese in Portugal as well. Mm. Mm-hmm. Well, mm-hmm. I just for I, he likes Latina chicks, but then I remembered that he is. He also likes now he's Portuguese. So there's also the Far East. That's he's not in his head now. Yeah. Oh yeah, forgot forgot about that. So Montezuma um, ha- spoke to them in a sort of flowery way, allegedly, uh, and the Spanish took that as a as a sign of submission to them uh however historians don't buy that the easiest way to explain this i could get really into detail about the languages but essentially montezuma was speaking a language um i think it was nahuatl or whatever but i'm not positive it's just very the way it's spoken it's very deferential Mm. it's very i don't know polite's the right way but very like people just keep deferring to each other and very like passive or whatever however you want to say it and but it's it's if you speak the language you understand that just because they're being deferential doesn't mean they are deferring it's just the way the language kind of it's really a tactic a tactical language in that in a setting of negotiation right yeah like yeah uh however something was a bit lost in translation to spanish so it just sounded like he was bending over oh interesting yeah i wonder why like I wonder what it was. 
I yeah, I don't know. And I, I like I read a whole explanation on it, but it was just kind of like convoluted and I didn't really feel like it's just essentially there the there was a lost in translation moment that made the Spanish think or justify that Montezuma was surrendering. That's a very European thing. What I assume we're the explanation gr- being convoluted. <laughs> it is. I, I imagine it would be something like they were like, Well, we we're gonna come in and take the city and like he was like, Oh, you're more than welcome to try. And it was like, oh, he says we're welcome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Like, yeah, something like that. Could be something, yeah, seriously. So anyway, blah, blah, blah. As we all know, the Spanish conquered the Aztecs, killed Montezuma. In the year 1522, after the fall of Tenochtitlan, La Malinche gives birth to her first son, Martin Cortez. Hmm. Cortez's firstborn son as well. Did he do anything notable or no? Uh, I didn't look it up. He was the Nirvana baby. Yeah. He I did continue the war path. <laughs> I did randomly look up uh, at one point Sacagawea's son, who she carried with her on the whole Lewis and Clark trip. Turns out he ended up moving back to St. Louis with Lewis or Clark. I can't remember which one. And uh, he's an alumni of my uh, brother's high school. Really? Yeah. St. Oh. Louis University High School. Nice. Went to SLU. Why the fuck did they have high school back then? <laughs> It was more like a university secondary school back then. Okay. But that yeah. that high school, my brother's and my dad, it was my dad's high school too. It was founded in uh, 1818 along with the university. Is that the uh, school that got like a silver medal in the Olympics? No, that's my school. That's my high school. Wow. <laughs> Damn it. CBC. <laughs> it makes no sense. <laughs> we, won Olympics. A, we, won a, we won a silver medal in soccer. <laughs> Second best soccer team in the world in 1904. Was that the the insane Olympics though, with like the people getting in it cars was. for yeah, the yeah, marathon? Yeah. Second best soccer team in the world <laughs> in 1904. No one knew how to get to that Olympics. Second best soccer team there in the world. It's in fair, yeah. There was two teams. It was a I'm gonna host the Olympics behind the studio team. and be like, "Hey, <laughs> <laughs> world champ, <laughs> the fastest guy here. It's just me." Uh, so. That's essentially the story of La Malinche. Um, inter- you know, that's what happened with her. However, we're going to talk about her uh, legacy here for a minute. Was she just a guide and an interpreter? No one who was there thinks that she was merely an interpreter, and neither do historians. Uh, Bernal Diaz de Castillo, a, a soldier with the Cortez's outfit, who wrote the most um, thorough contemporary account, of Cortez's conquest, uh, and he wrote it as an old man, but he said that Cortez, or he he said he called her Doña Marina. They named her Marina after they baptized her. So Doña Marina, as she was known by all the Spanish soldiers, Doña is like another hot sauce. It, it is, uh, <laughs> but um, Doña is like a honorific. Ter- it's like Madam or or you know, like I, I gotta imagine or it's like Dame. La- I was about to say Lady Don, like yeah, Don, yeah, yeah, yeah. Lady Doña, Don? Yep, yeah. yeah. So anyway, he was like she. We would not have. So we would not have done what we did without her. She was like the MVP. Like I said, Cortez said that after God, she was the main reason. Um, although some say Marina La Lamanche, uh, or Malinche, um, may be known as a traitor. She was not viewed as such by the Tlax Collins. She was shown as a super important figure in the native tellings of the conquest. Not important in that she was the primary antagonist or something, but that she was... In their depictions of her, she's larger than life. Sometimes she's depicted, and Cortez isn't even in the picture. That's crazy. Um, And in a lot of stuff, she's larger than (laughs) Cortez. She's shown in rich, lavish clothing. She's an important noblewoman. Um, The alliance is shown in at least one depiction being between her and the Tlaxcalan, not between the Tlaxcalan and the Spanish. Oh, okay. Uh, In another history... Not only is Cortez rarely portrayed without her, um, but she is shown, like I said, at times on her own as an independent authority. So she is, and this might be because of her noble upbringing. So in her, where she was brought up. She's not chained up like Princess Leia in Jabba the Hutt. No, no. She is, when you are a noble wife in where she grew up, and really, honestly, in Europe and a lot of places too, when you're sold off as a bride to, you know, foster an alliance or whatever, you're not just like, there to have kids or whatever you're there to help be uh, a bridge with the people that you know married you off and stuff like that steward for the culture for democracy 100 percent um today's historians actually give a ton of credit to la malinche's diplomatic skills with this is a direct quote some almost tempted to think of her as the real conqueror of mexico wow 
That's impressive. I mean, she was doing so. Apparently, she was not just inter- this is basically what's happening. She's not just interpreting. She's not just translating. She's wheeling and dealing. She is doing the deals. Yeah, I mean, and that makes sense too because she's in the position to do so. She's kind of the the Rosetta Stone of the situation, right? Like she knows yeah. most of the languages that are being spoken. And by the way, if someone says something fucked up or something that might offend Cortez or vice versa, she can maybe massage that, leave it out. Yeah. She also, yeah, threw in some of her own perks. And threw in some of her own shit to like that she knew would make them happier, so on and so forth. Um, like I said, the conquistadors that were there say she helped convince natives. Um, oh, I didn't say this, actually. The conquistadors were there, that were there also said that she helped convince natives uh, that it was useless to fight against the Spanish because of their tech and guns and ship, probably horses, horse people as well. She probably just rolled up with a rifle and like pointed it at someone. Was like, it was like, don't. check it out. Look yeah. how I just killed that she man. She just murked someone. Yeah. yeah. Just to prove a point. They, there's 100,000 people with these this over there. Yeah. Honestly, this woman's a gangster. Her her legacy in Mexico is honestly fascinating. I, I probably should have said this earlier. I doubt I'm doing her justice because, again, this is softcore history. She's a extremely fascinating person that in terms more so of the reaction to her in a lot of ways. So partly she is seen as the mother of mestizos, which is uh, pe- Spanish and indigenous combined. Basically, most Mexicans, you know, mm-hmm. um, but she adapted on the fly. Dude, yeah, she props to her for just like seeing what was going to happen and choosing the right side. She is also seen. By some, like I, like you alluded to, and like is probably obvious to listeners as a traitor. So much so that today in Mexican Spanish, the words "la manchismo" and "la manchista" are used to denounce Mexicans who are perceived as denying their own culture in preference of a foreign cultural expression. Interesting. The Henry Cejudos of the world. I you won't get that. Get that. Uh, he, <laughs> he's from America, but he has you know Mexican roots. And right. it's like, I'll never fly a Mexican flag. Why would I do that? So it's essentially like, if you're not acting Mexican enough, mm-hmm. if you're acting too wh- white or, I don't know, African-American, maybe you get into hip-hop or whatever, and yeah. you're kind of just like, yeah, fuck Mexico. I'm, I think that like black culture is cool. Or He also won an cool. Olympic gold medal for America. So Sick. Yeah. The, Why the fuck would he fly a Mexican flag? Manchista or la manchismo, uh, if, you, if you do that. Some historians believe that la uh saved her people from the Aztecs who were the regional hegemon um, and were, you know, basically taxing every stealing from everyone, really. Uh, again, she grew up in a city state that was basically a client state of the Aztecs. So she might have had something against the Aztecs. Although I don't think I really don't think it was a revenge tour for her. That it's is just a power tour. That is a narrative that it was sort of a revenge tour and a fuck the Aztecs tour. I don't think that that is... There were people who were like, fuck the Aztecs, the Plax Collins in particular. Yeah. I don't think that was necessarily where she was coming from. It from my hurt, extensive, though, right? hours-long it research. It, doesn't, it, it didn't give her any pause. No. There was no yeah. pause like, oh, should I do this to the Aztecs? There was never that moment where it's like... Right. It was like, no, yeah, I fuck don't, it. She yeah. remembered. Yeah. Uh, because, but it was probably... It could have been the... At- so, I will say this. We don't know how she became a slave fully, but she was living in Aztec territory and was kidnapped and then sold to Mayans, people outside of the Aztec territory. Stands to reason maybe that Mayans weren't raiding, especially that far. She was kind of far up the coast a little bit, mm-hmm. that it was Aztecs kidnapping a rando who wandered too far away from the village along with other women and boys and stuff and probably, and then sold them to a neighboring power for profit yeah i mean it could just been a bunch so of could maybe, just been bandits like you said like they're just raiders yeah and it's just illegal slave trade who knows yeah. i don't think she necessarily had anything against the aztecs like the certainly not like the tax collins did um in my opinion but my um, it's not a very informed opinion so whatever <laughs> uh starting in the 1960s she also became really popular with mexican feminists and she lived a long time huh yeah yeah <laughs> chicanas started to refer to her as mother because she was sort of the "Quote unquote mother of their race, of Mexicans." Uh, although after the Mexican Revolution, when they got independence from Spain, people did think she was a traitor, fucking hater, wanted to kind of push off anything that was Spanish. Mm. Uh, Mexican feminists, though, defended La Malinche uh, as a woman caught between cultures, forced to make complex decisions. They treat her like a human being. They also called her the mother of a new race, um, and they th- viewed any sort of uh, calling her a traitor as, as scapegoating 
um, at the very least, is taking heat off of Cortez. I mean, I, I got to wonder, and someone can flame me for this. I don't really care. But like to be like, oh, just trying to push away the Mexico stuff. It's like, well, it's kind of late for that, right? Like what, that's very much half of your like a big half of your culture. Well, Spain's now. push off Spain. Or, yeah, push yeah. off Spain. Sorry. Like, it's like, oh, we got to denounce that. It's like, I'd say it's a lot more than half if that's the language you speak. Yeah, right. Like, I'm just saying, and maybe you know, well, Irish people would be pissed if you said that. Yeah, because they didn't. Sp- they spoke. They spoke right. Gaelic. Yeah. And then, and then they were forced to unlearn Gaelic. Yeah. So I mean, there could have been that situation, but either way, what I'm saying is like, no, it probably was that situation, but at this point, it doesn't matter. Yeah, but. It either way, it is. to push away, like, you're very much this, too. Yeah, yeah I don't know. It's just, like, I, I would feel very conflicted by that if I was, like, half of it, right? And I was like, oh, I got to get rid of it. I I'm mean, already half of it. It's not quite the same, but, you know, the um, when the American Revolution happened, we didn't want to be under British rule, but we kept quite a bit of British, like, common law and all that stuff. Like, yeah, it's like... We didn't think the system or the culture was bad. We just didn't want... The taxes. To just, yeah, really. Yeah. Yeah, well, after the war, Washington kind of sided with the English over the French. Yeah, a hundred percent, because the French were way more culturally different. Man, mm-hmm. he's like, I understand the English. Yeah, the English were the closest. We were English, really. Yeah. I it's mean, it's like we just really hated the tax system. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's really this one thing, just, and just we still do. <laughs> thing. Um, but that's all I got for today. Uh, what did you guys learn today? Um, I learned that these hot sauce kingdoms really <laughs> just yeah. could not hold their own. Um. No, I, I guess I learned about this person in general, but also I want I'm really excited to learn about the like college football war, the f- war of the That'll fl- probably the my next war. my very yeah. next episode cuz I I started reading it and I was like fuck. Cuz I was going to do mention a decent amount about it, but then I was like there's just so much. Be a whole episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had something confirmed. It seems like a Patreon episode. Well, I am Patreon next yeah. week, so subscribe to our Patreon patreon.com/softcore history oh, if you want to learn like about a two the flower wars. Yeah. Don't Wikipedia it. Do not Wikipedia it. Wait for me to do it. Because he'll copy paste straight to the paper from there. Our first two-parter. Um, and it's behind a paywall. It did confirm something for me, though, and that's if you're in the position to tell one group of people something to, like another from another group of people, you have a lot of power. There's power in interpretation and power in message relay. Power in middle, just middleman in yeah. general. Yeah. It's not bad being in the middle. It's a good gig if you can get it. Lucky Pierre. Just you like play uh, right. there's this one dude that speaks Portuguese uh, as the interpreter for the UFC. Does every single event because there's always Brazil Brazilian yeah. fighters, and that's I mean that's that's good pay. It's got to be go to every UFC event and just Hell speak yeah. Portuguese, dude. Are you kidding me? There's some guy who literally I guarantee makes six figures just to s- translate Shohei Otani. Oh yeah. You know, I, I kind of just need to become fluent in the language. You really, honestly, like, if you want to increase your job prospects infinitely, just yeah. learn a different language. That guy just hangs out, like, on a chair or in the dugout of a Major League Baseball team. He's probably on his phone fucking around, and someone's like, hey, will you ask Shoei um, you know how his arm's feeling? understands English, too. Shoei? For sure. I don't think... I think he knows it. Yeah, but I, I think usually... It's like he, Ichiro. I think Ichiro could speak English. Speaking is usually the hardest part. I think he doesn't want to. He chooses not to. It's almost a power move. That is a power move. I agree with that. Uh, did, what did you say? Oh, w- wait. What did you learn? I learned about this uh, Mexican mother. The mother of Mexicans. Mother of Mexico. Is that the title? Mother of Mexicans? The mother of Mexico. Yeah, I like that. No, not Mexico. Mexicans. Mexicans yeah. She invented the race in her womb. They did kind of say that. The Mexican feminists of the 60s said that she kind of was the mother of a new race. Uh, who's today's Hitler? Hmm. I'm gonna say the uh, the tribe that kind of went back on their word and tried to pull the old switcheroo, the Cholulans. Yeah, the Cholulans just trying to backstab Cortez. He's just a hardworking uh, grinder. That's <laughs> that's not what happened. This is a tribe of haters. I, honestly, dude, the guy's just trying to set up shop, do his own thing. He's an entrepreneur. Yeah, I could also say the Cholulans for dipping on the other kingdom. They were they just took dicks, a better deal. Yeah. yeah. Or they took a deal they had to make. They're looking out for number one. Yeah, but they kept fucking them themselves. So every deal they made was bad. Yeah. I don't think the Cholulans were in a great position. I mean, the Hitler's Cortez. Yeah. How about the slave traders? Yeah, they're not great. No, which is everyone. Everyone's Hitler today. <laughs> Earth is Hitler. Humans Earth. are Hitler. Humans are Hitler today. Yeah. 
Uh, well, that is all I have got. Thank you so much for listening. Again, we have a Patreon, patreon.com slash softcore history. $5 a month, get you two episodes a week and a like two year long back catalog at this point. Mm-hmm. All evergreen content, uh, save for the occasional college football reference. Check it all out. Um, and then please leave a review on yeah. Apple and Spotify. Maybe let's r- read some more. We got some good inspiring ones. Inspiring reviews. Yeah, we got some good ones too. So uh, this one is from 69STX69. Excellent. It's great. Became a patron. Do it. It's the least you can do for such great, such a great show. Stoked I found this uh, from 8.5 Pointer. I went through high school and college reading everything Rob and Dan put on TFM. No mention of Jake. And now love listening to the pod. Sick. Didn't realize this existed until two months ago. You and a lot of other people. And looking forward to catching up on the catalog. So, yeah, please, word of mouth is the best way to spread the really show. Is. And I, I'm sure there's, I mean, there's literal millions of people that read me and Rob's stuff at TFM. If they could find the show, maybe they'll like it. Yeah. Just Google whatever happened to those losers from TFM. Those fucking boners. Yeah. Uh, that has all is all I've got, though. For uh, So for Jake Goldman and Darren Jester, I'm Rob Fox. We love you, and you just got soft served. <laughs>